supply line cranes, but they're behind as well, which is excellent. Another one, Extinguish All Hope. What do you make of that card, I like ben? Extinguish All Hope. Even though a lot of times you don't get to play it, Black, I like it in a control deck. Black is more often than not control in this format. I also like it if you end up in, with the enchantment deck, then it's just Plague Wind for six. You know, mm -hmm. just kills your opponent's guys and not yours. So, I mean, it's a card with a lot of upside. I don't take it over Golden Hind. But I don't mind starting a draft with it. Okay. Yeah, I actually would take Golden Hind out of that pack as well, though. For me, Supply Line Cranes is close uh, uh, because I love that card. Supply Line Cranes is distant fourth in that pack. I mean, there was a Magma Spray, a Golden Hind, and an Extinguish All Hopes, oh, I believe. I, I, see, I take Cranes over Magma Spray. Yeah, I don't like that. I yeah. thought we were talking about the cheap and efficient and all of that. I, normally I do, but I think Supply Line Cranes is really excellent. No, I mean, it's a good point. I think people way overrate sticking to their philosophies. You should really evaluate each card on its own and everything mm -hmm. like that. But I disagree because I don't think Supply Line Cranes is that great. I mean, makes sense for five these days, you need the power of the cards to like kind of exponentially scale. How, how do you feel about much. this five drop? Whitewater Nyads. That's Whitewater what I would Nyads. take out of this pack here. Yeah, love Whitewater Whitewater Nyads, and it's a perfect follow-up to Extinguish All Hope. So I can't see how this could even be really that close of a pick for Tim. Right. He did a little pack review, but uh, even though it was hiding at the back, I don't think there was ever a question for Tim there. Whitewater Nyads is excellent. All right, there's a spiteful blow, so we know he's got something to pick in any case. Another Cranes, though, he seems to be... Uh, pretty off of the Cranes plan here, and he's got other options. Uh, do you like Spiteful Blow, Hubris? What do you like I here? like Hubris because I'm not going to commit to this, like, Black Blue enchantment deck, and Hubris is a lot cheaper, more efficient, and probably a better card than Spiteful Blow. Okay. Whereas if you have White and Whitewater Nyads is a lot better than Extinguish All Hope, so I want to support my Whitewater Nyads here because I might play Blue Green, Blue White, Blue Black, you know, whatever. Sure. I'd, be, I'd rather drop the Extinguish All Hope than drop the Whitewater Nyads. I'm willing to drop either, but, you know, now that I'm seeing a Hubris... I, I, if it goes that way, I would want to support my uh, my Whitewater Nyads. Okay, here's his next pick. This one's not quite as exciting. He's got some interesting stuff. There's a Pin of the Earth. There's also a Riptide Chimera. Yeah, and this is where the combo decks get dangerous, because I'm between Pin of the Earth and Riptide Chimera here. Mm -hmm. Pin of the Earth is a better card for a standard control deck. Right. Riptide Chimera is probably better if you're going to end up this, like, mono enchantment deck or whatever. Right. Uh, I don't know how feasible that is, and I don't think you want to gamble that heavily on it early. Yeah. So you probably take Pin to the Earth. Also, you kind of want both of those, right? right? Like pick up your Pin to the Earth. It's cheap. You can recast it. Right. You can move it around. At this point, you're just thinking. You just know you're like a controlish deck. Right. Probably blue, possibly black. All right. What do you like? Second Pin to the Earth or first Cloak Siren here? Second Pin to the Earth. Um, Cloak Siren is just a real mediocre win condition for a blue back control deck. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'll pick them up and I'll play them, but I wouldn't take them over Pin to the Earth. All right. Well, he decided to go for the for the Cloak Siren. He must feel like he needs a few more ways to actually close out the game. It's not hard to close out in games you're already winning. I mean, Extinguish All Hope, and it's not even an enchantment. I like Pin to the Earth a lot. It lets you draw first, which is something control decks want to do because they're not racing. It kills like a bestowed creature, you know, like you bestow on a creature and then it gets pinned. It's basically like a two for one. One of the few ways to do that, too. Yeah. Let's say like we were talking about cards that are good early and good late. Pinned is good at any stage in the game. Right. So he's going to take a Warwing Siren here. It looks like he's, he's definitely favoring the Flyers here in the early part of this pack. He took the, took the Cloak Siren and now the Warwing yeah, Siren. Yeah, maybe an old school player. You know, flying used to be really good. <laughs> uh, the, the creatures hit a little harder these days, so flying's not quite what it used to be. Mm. Obviously, it's still a positive ability. It just doesn't add quite as much value to the cards. Uh, personally, I probably wouldn't have took that Warming Siren. Mm -hmm. I didn't get. I was still thinking about the other stuff, so I didn't really go through that pack that in, um, intently, but... I mean, there was a spiteful blow. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure what else was there, but I thought there was even more playables in that pack. I do like these uh, Deadbringer land pads he's taking. Even though they're not the best, I mean, he's got Extinguish All Hope. So, I mean, it's pretty good if you can drop a five mana enchantment creature and then Extinguish. That hits hard, too. It's four power. Yeah. Yeah, I view Warwing Siren as a little bit more narrow of a card than I think most do. I, I really only want it in, in decks that I can really target it with a bunch of stuff. Yeah, like, I'm agree. not too happy to just play a 1-3 a flyer. Decks like we just saw Brad have, where right. um, you have two Fate Foretolds. Exactly. And That's the deck I wanted in. I agree. So I think he took a Font of Fortunes there. Mm. This is definitely leaning him towards the, the control end of the spectrum here. He could go off with Thassa's Devourer. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just snapped up Aspect of Gorgon. He's just cutting. I don't know. I mean, it's an okay card. It, does, it doesn't seem like what his deck really wants since he has a bunch of five drops and pinned to the earth. Right.
poor BDM is just cringing over there. Multiple strengths from the Fallen is just flying around this table. Is that a BDM card? Oh, that is the BDM card <laughs> from this from this set. Yeah, he loves that card. He's done some really nasty things with it too. You know how we were talking about being an optimist and stuff? He's mm -hmm. an optimist. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a card I've played with very much. I think I did have one green-black enchantment deck on MTGO where I did play a strength and it was pretty good for me. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I was all there. I believe I had, you know, a bunch of graveyard synergy, the Satar Wayfinders, the crew fixes insights, and, you know, 14 enchantments or something. It was like, it was yeah. a very good deck. All right, so Tim's firmly in blue-black here, as you can see. Hasn't really strayed much from that either. No, and he shouldn't have. Blue and black were the colors he saw. I mean, Golden Hide might have been the right pick over Extinguish All Hope. Mm -hmm. But after he did that, he saw White Water Nides and Ubris and Black Creatures. How close do you think that pick is, Golden Hind versus Extinguish All Hope? Uh, not super. I like Extinguish All Hope, but Golden Hind is really good. It's really good, right? Yeah. Just asks very little of you, is in a really solid color. Really efficient, really useful. Obviously, Extinguish All Hope has a much higher top end. I mean, that card can just win you the game. Sure, but, but it asks you know, you're, big, you're big paying setup three cost times on as that. much mana, and you need other things to go right. Right. That's that is the big issue, I think, with Extinguish is that your opponent can just uh, have random enchantment creatures and kind of get you. All right, what do we got? Retraction Helix. And there's other type games where your opponent just has one guy that you extinguish or something, and it's just not that great for six mana. Yeah, I mean, this should be Retraction Helix. His deck's not aggressive enough to want Spiteful uh, Return. Nyxborn Eidolon is good, it's flexible, but it's no Retraction Helix. It's unfortunate he's not white. Ornithark is really great. Yeah. I think it might have been the best on common in um, that set. In, in uh, Born of the Gods? Born of the Gods, yeah. That's, yeah, that's where I had it at. Another card with low setup cost. It just it asks almost nothing of you. It's just the mana, yeah. you know, which it is five. But once you cast it, it's yeah. Just but that's great what you card. want for five. You know, you're yes. basically getting a five-five flyer. Exactly. Maybe it's two one-one flyers and a three-three flyer. Maybe it's one five-five flyer. Right. Either Asphyxiate way, that's good for five mana. Is what he's pulled to the front. But there's also Oracle's Insight, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I mean, I just snap up the Asphyxiate. What do you like here, Ben? Yeah, I like the Asphyxiate. He's already got a bunch of five drops. It's not like his deck has a bunch of two mana uh, guys and cheap defensive guys, and he needs that way to win. Mm -hmm. He's got m three five drops and extinguish all hope. So what I'm trying to do is asphyxiate. You know, their three or four late game card, whatever I need to asphyxiate. The, you know, the card changes during the game or whatever. Right. But I'm I'm interested in asphyxiate here, not oracles in sight, because I don't want my hand to be oracles in sight of five drop and extinguish all hope. Right. And I think he's also got a font of fortunes already. And you know, there, you don't need that many draw spells in your deck, right. generally speaking. And oracles in sight is one of the better ones if it sticks, but it's also one of the riskier ones because you can lose. Right. Your it's guy. a fine finisher. Yeah. It's just not what he needs. He doesn't right. need a finisher. He needs that cheap removal and asphyxiate. All right, there's a Sudden Storm for him. Now, what do you make of Sudden Storm in a sudden build storm like what we have in a deck turn? like his is not good. It's just not good, right? In, in a beatdown deck, it's a tier one card. Right. If you're playing white-blue heroic aggro or blue-green creatures, you know, Sudden Storm is backbreaking. It's If your opponent's thinking if he has a Sudden Storm, I can't win. Right. But when you're a control deck, when you're a deck with Wrath and a bunch of five drops and stuff, it's very rare that you're the one who's going to be ahead and then Sudden Storming for the win. Right. More than likely, if you're Sudden Storming for the win, you could have won that game anyway because you have bigger creatures than them or more, more powerful creatures than them. He does take it, though. There wasn't much for him there. Ooh, yeah. nice one. Nick's born Oh, yeah. I don't fault him for taking it. There was, like, nothing in that pack. Yeah. Even if it doesn't make his main. So he's got a Nyxborn Triton. We see an Eater of Hope, which is a card that both you and I agreed. We're just not big fans this of that one. This is an easy Triton. Nyxborn Triton is flexible. It's defensive. You know, you can, it's decent in the late game because of the bestow. It's decent on turn three as a 2-3. It's an enchantment creature. It goes with Extinguish. I would not be happy if he took something other than Nyxborn Triton out of that pack. Oh, Didn't we, we saw this pack. Did I we think. just rewind the tape? <laughs> we did not. Well, I still wouldn't take Sudden Storm now that there's other blue cards. And he, and he took the other one, so he definitely doesn't right. want a second. So do, do you want a Deepwater Hypnotist to just get a two-drop yeah. on the table, or do you want an Insight? I'd probably take the Insight, because even if I didn't start it, because it's not what my deck really needs, I might board it in for the right matchup or something. Yeah. I don't blame him for taking the Hypnotist. I, his deck does, like, if this was going to be the last pick of the draft, mm -hmm. I would take the Hypnotist, because okay. I don't even know if he has a single two-drop. Right. But, you know, there are a decent amount of two-drops you can get in pack three, Farika's Cure and Return Falnix. I don't mind prioritizing those over other things. I mean, Voyage's End, Vaporkin. 
I think at this point, Deepwater Hypnotist is such a bad one that I wouldn't want to take it over Oracle's Insight yet. All right, there's Ashiok's Adept he's pulled to the front. It looks like he's going to take it Pretty here easy now. Pick. I, I do remember, though, earlier in this pack, he had opened uh, either two or three Nyxborn Eidolons, and I think he's really hoping to try to get those back. Yeah, that would be pretty lucky. Yeah, I think so too. He pulled those to the front, and they were certainly in contention for his picks, and uh, those would shore up his early game and then hence his late game as well pretty nicely. Brawler, unfortunately, doesn't really serve that role in his deck as it's just basically not going to be able to block ever, so no. that's not going to do it. And there's a chorus to the Tides. You talked about that earlier. You know, he's got kind of the replaceable cloak siren that he took fairly early. And you that's know, it's why like I you could just get these here. And we're right? talking about how he's lacking two drops, right? Right. Which is exactly why I would have took Pin of the Earth over Cloak Siren. Yep. Now I'll pick up this Chorus of Tides and have my Flyer to win with, but I, I, I need that two-mana card right. that can really stop an aggressive draw and still be good in the late game. The problem with a lot of two-mana cards, like Deepwater Hypnotist, is that they're blanks in the late game, so you don't really want to play them. Pin to the Earth, stop your two-drop on turn two, stop your five-drop on turn five, all for two mana. Great, great card if you're the one on defense. Obviously, right. not a good card if you're, you know, trying to race or attack them. But not a good aggressive card, but a, a great defensive card. He's going to take Sphinx's Disciple, though. I'd be surprised if that made the main. I think anytime you draft Sphinx's Disciple, you're thinking this is moderately playable. I hope I don't have to play this. Yeah. Like, I hope it does not make the main. It's your 24th card. Yeah, hopefully it's your 24th. Sometimes it's your 23rd. All right, so let's take a look at what his deck looks like. Uh, it feels like he's in the right colors. I mean, he's got plenty of options here. It's not like he's being cut off from left or right or here. So, uh, you know, he's actually got a lot to look forward to. I don't think playables are going to be an issue for him. So he's got some flexibility with, like, curve-based picks and that kind of thing uh, in the Theros pack. Yeah, his power level's not that high, though. It is not. We see a lot of, we see a Cloak Siren, a Chorus of the Tides, two Deepwater Hypnotists, Ashiex Adept. A lot of cards that are playable by all means, but more like filler than good. Right. The C grade stuff. Yeah. Whitewater Naiads is exciting. I'm a pretty big fan of Pin of the Earth, as I'm sure everybody listening can tell by now. Yeah, if you listen to my podcast, you'll find out that I am also. But Asphyxiate is good. But there's only maybe six cards he has at this point that I consider optimal that you really want to play. And then there's another, you know. 10 that you're fine with playing, and that's enough, but you're not excited about playing, you know? Right. Now, there's a lot of exciting things that he can get in this Theros pack, so let's see if he... Uh, oh, yeah, blue and black, two of the best colors in Theros. Right. See Sam Parties to his left. If, it, if that camera went up a little higher, you would see he's wearing a ridiculous skull cap thing. And apparently, he said he lost a bet. Wow, nice one for Tim Rivera here. Well, Whip of Erebos is what he's opened. Don't turn into the little kid in me. I like Whip, and it goes well with Extinguish All <laughs> Hope, and I would probably take it. But it's one of those situationally powerful cards. I think a lot of the, the time... The situation being that you have creatures? No, the situation being <laughs> that you're not that far behind, and that um, you, you're able to trade off your creatures and whip them back. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean... Let's pretend your opponent's pressuring you and you're having to trade to stay, you know, to stay uh -huh, on board. Uh -huh. Do you take turn four off and play whip, and then you turn, play, take turn five and play something and they kill it or voyages end it? No, I play something on turn four, and then on turn five I play whip and attack them or block or okay, whatever, and they can never race me you, anymore. And you can't be too far behind, and they can never they can never bounce or kill it then, and you, and you gain three or four uh, life. I think that's a pretty time. realistic scenario. It I'm is. normally with you on the oh, there's a, a shipwreck scenario. Yeah, no, it way, is a ten. realistic scenario. Yeah, but there are times where you're on your back foot and whip isn't good. Maybe your creatures sure. are, are smaller and they can't attack profitably. Sure. Maybe you, your creature's bigger, but then they bounced or killed it. Mm -hmm. I like Whip here. I would take it. I would. I, I think he took it. I wasn't really. He, he I didn't did. See, he he kind of windmilled it. There yeah. was also a Voyage Zen in right. there, too. Right, but th no, there was Insatiable Harpy, too. And yep. I think about half the time I'm black, I would take Insatiable Harpy over Whip. You're Insati crazy. Insatiable Harpy is very good. 
Man, whip is unbeatable. Insatiable if you harpy have is like a creature with whip already. <laughs> yeah, but it's only one. I want all my creatures to be insatiable harpies. You don't need, that, you don't need harpies. that though. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. They might kill your insatiable harpy, and then you'd like right. another one. It's too but toughness in the, creature. Fine, but in the event that they can't, you, you have your you already have a whipped creature with insatiable harpy. But I mean, like my whip makes my flesh mad seed into a, an insatiable harpy. It makes my you know return phalanx into a. But it doesn't because your flesh mad seed is unlikely to get through. It's a two mana two two on the ground. What do you like here out of this pack? Uh, Return Phalanx. His deck is really powerful, so I don't think he can take uh, Read the Bones here. I think okay. it needs the two drop. Now, what about Farika's Cure? Does that catch your eye? Yeah, that's a close pick, but uh, it's harder to cast. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's super heavy black, where he's going to be on 11 swamps. I think he's going to be more of a 9 swamp, 8 island, or 10 swamp, 7 island deck. Okay. And uh, Return Phalanx is a great blocker. It's good with whip, too. I mean, it's not great because Kentak is going to play whip, but it's a creature, so it clearly has more synergy with whip than Farika's Cure. Right. There's some decent cards in this pack, but nothing that really goes great in this deck. Blood Toll Harpy is okay. Tormented yeah. Hero, not so much here. Hippocamp's yeah, just, I mean, yeah. Cheap flyer. Your mic's off? It's a cheap flyer. It's decent with whip. Um, Blood Toll Harpy is just, you know, the pick there. Okay. What do you think about Sea Lock Monster as a finisher in a deck like this? It's fine. It's not an exciting finisher because he already has three five drops, maybe more. Uh, it's good when they're blue. It's good against like green monsters. It's a little weak against like a red black deck or something where their guys are faster and they may have a removal spell. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a solid creature though. Yeah, I it's like still it. huge, right? Five toughness mm -hmm. is really big. And a five five for five is always good. Yeah, it's hard to go wrong there. I think the one pick that we were still discussing whip over, which we glazed over, was shipwreck singer. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, I'm sure, that was an easy pick. Shipwreck singer is amazing, as we've talked about all day. Right. Uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, he snapped up a shipwreck singer because I like that card so much. Yeah. <laughs> shipwreck singer high fives you in the background. Now yeah. he picked up a return phalanx here as well, just with the doctor order. That's exactly what he wants. We were talking about. Uh, the two drops earlier that he needs to kind of make sure he has uh, useful things to do in the early part of the game, and he seems to have filled that out uh, at least reasonably here. Yep. And now Cavern Lamp had a, a sideboard card uh, for his deck, I think because his deck's not aggressive, but he might play against a deck with walls, another control deck, and then he might be able to give plus two, plus two in fear, and uh, that might be a win condition. So that can be like a finisher for him down the line? Right. For certain types of decks, he can bring that in. Where he's, like, that card is too bad if your opponent's pressuring you and you're in the control role. But let's say that's not the case. Let's say his opponent's also on a defensive deck or, or a mid-range deck. He can bring in the lamp pad, and, right. you know, it might be a tough card for his opponent to deal with. All right, Tim picked up an null here. Sideboard, mediocre. And we're in the late part of the pack here. He still has reasonable options. I mean, he's, he's pulled the Hippocamp, but there's also a Viper's Kiss down there that and would be nice to have floating around. And I around. like the Viper's Kiss here because there are a few cards it's good against. Yeah. Golden Hind, Shipwreck Singer. And if you see one, maybe two of those great targets for it, you bring it in and it's a great card. Yeah. So even though it's a cyber card, it has the potential to be a very good card. Right. Reaching Hippocamp, he's not going to play. He doesn't need. It it's offers not a cyborg nothing. card, yeah. It's a bear, It's an okay playable if you have good inspired or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't believe Tim has a single inspired card. He does. He has his Sphinx's Disciple, but he's probably not running that either. I mean, he, oh, I guess he has the Deepwater Hypnotist. So he picked yeah. up like two of those, so yeah. maybe that's you why you can do he's it as a it. combat trick or something. Yeah, when I'm thinking inspired, I'm thinking the good ones like Airy Worshipper. Right there, you go. But uh, I, I guess he does have two Deepwater Hypnotists, so maybe he figures he can make a combat trick there with Breaching Hippo Camp. Okay. All right, so Tim Rivera. Drafted what looks to be a really nice blue-black deck. Um, hopefully we get a chance to see it in the feature match here. We'll have to keep an eye on it, though. But uh, I'm curious how he built it. I mean, the deck looked really good to me, though, by the end. Like, I'd be pretty happy with that.